Recently, I noticed that a lot of my laser related videos are becoming quite popular and I get a lot of emails with beginner level questions about laser cutting and engraving. And this tells me there's a lot of new people getting into the hobby, which I think is fantastic. And it prompted me to make this video here addressing some of the safety considerations when getting started with laser cutting and engraving. I'm gonna try and keep this video short and digestible, but if you're looking for more information, I'll put links in the video description down below where you can go more in depth into some of these topics. And this video is not meant to scare anyone. It's just meant to keep you informed so you can take the proper precautions and safety measures to keep yourself safe. x was kind enough to supply me with the safety equipment shown in this video, so please go check them out. They've been a big supporter of my channel and I really appreciate them. At the end of this video, I have an exciting announcement with some details of a new x product and an early bird giveaway. Keep watching so you can find out how to participate. So when we're dealing with risks and hazards, there's something called the hierarchy of controls, which is meant to rank safeguards that protect people from the most effective to the least effective. And when it comes to working with a desktop laser cutter and engraver, there's three main types of hazards that we encounter. We're gonna explore each type of hazard using the hierarchy of controls framework. First is eye and skin damage. High power lasers pose a risk to our eyes and skin as our bodies can absorb the laser light and cause blindness or skin burns. And the best solution here would be to eliminate or substitute the hazard altogether, but since we're not gonna get rid of our laser cutters, we've cut the next best thing, which would be to isolate ourselves in some way. Now it's not recommended to leave your laser unattended because of the risk of fire. So we can put an enclosure around the machine to act as a barrier. X-Tool offers an enclosure with a viewing window that absorbs laser light. The enclosure will help protect our eyes, but we should also practice good laser safety by never looking into the laser, never looking at the laser reflections, never laser mirror-like finishes as the reflected laser light can damage our eyes, and never reach into the enclosure while the laser is running. If you're servicing your laser, always unplug the machine while removing the laser head module. According to the hierarchy of controls, your last line of defense is personal protective equipment, which we'll refer to as PPE in this video. And you can find protective goggles from X-Tool and you can find them on my website as well. The purpose is to attenuate the laser light and save your eyes from damage. Personally, even if I'm using an enclosure, I always wear my laser safety glasses. And I'm gonna put a link in the video description down below discussing what to look for when it comes to laser safety glasses. You can also wear gloves to protect your skin if you feel it's necessary. The second type of hazard we can encounter is fire. And currently there are quite a few high power lasers available on the market and not surprisingly, they are capable of starting fires. In a video I recently made about the X-Tool D1 Pro 40 watt laser module, I accidentally started a small fire and it can happen with flammable materials if you do not process them properly. To avoid the risk of a fire, we can eliminate flammable materials altogether if possible, but likely you're interested in cutting or engraving one of the most popular materials, which is wood. Now wood is obviously very flammable, so to reduce our chances of starting a fire, we can use the correct material settings to avoid the laser dwelling in one spot for too long. Pumping a lot of energy into a small area very quickly will surely start a fire like I did. Additionally, we can put some controls in place to further reduce the chance of a fire. When cutting through materials, you'll want to use a honeycomb bed with a metal backing on the bottom. Aluminum is a great backing material for the blue diode lasers. The honeycomb lifts the material off of the work surface and provides an air gap, thereby removing the heat away from the tabletop and it allows the laser to pass through and by the time it hits the next surface, it's more or less out of focus and the laser spot will be much larger and less intense. Additionally, you can put something there like silicone mats on your table, which are very heat resistant and not prone to burning. I'll link to those in the video description down below, but whatever you do, never use a PVC cutting mat as your bottom layer. PVC can produce toxic gases when vaporized, but we'll talk about that more in a minute. Another thing we can do is place a barrier between ourselves and the potential source of fire. Again, the X-Tool enclosure is a nice solution here, and the material itself is flame retardant. I also offer an LED lighting kit on my website that makes it easier to see inside of the enclosure so you can assess what's happening in there and take the appropriate action. X-Tool also offers flame detection on their machines, which will trigger an alarm, and they also have this amazing fire suppression system. 
even with the fire suppression system, you should still never leave your laser unattended. We'll have a very brief look at how the fire suppression system works, and I'll even do a demonstration. And so what I've done here is a temporary installation inside of the enclosure. Normally all of these sensors would be fixed to the machine frame itself, but for now I've fixed them inside of the enclosure because I'm not going to be putting a machine in there while I start a real fire. In addition to the sensors, you can also see a tube poking out the top, and that's where the carbon dioxide will come out of to suffocate the fire. On the side of the enclosure, I've temporarily taped on the sensor hub, which gets connected to the main unit. And although this isn't how I'd normally do it, this will be sufficient for our test. The fire suppression system also comes with a smart plug that gets synced to the main unit. This is where you'd plug in your laser cutter, and in the event of a fire, the fire suppression system would turn this plug off, killing power to your machine. I'm going to be performing this test outside for obvious reasons, and as much as I'd love to go viral on the internet, I'd rather not have it be for ironically burning my house down while testing a fire suppression system. Now instead of having my D1 inside of the enclosure while we start a fire, I have a light bulb on top plugged into the smart plug, and when the fire suppression system goes off, the light bulb should turn off, simulating the machine turning off. The system is armed and I'll throw some paper inside that I've set on fire and I'll close the lid. The sensors will detect the open flame and trigger an audible alarm. Seconds after that, the carbon dioxide will be rapidly released into the enclosure, suffocating the fire. The system successfully put out that fire in one blast. The smart plug also successfully turned the LED bulb off on top, simulating our laser cutter, and so therefore power would be cut to the machine and we would not have the laser creating more fire. And to be sure there are no embers left to reignite the fire, there's a second blast after a 20 second interval, and that's gonna absolutely make sure that fire is extinguished. And you would of course have a small mess to clean up like I did here, but obviously that's much better than burning down your house or your workshop. The enclosure did a good job of containing the flames, the viewing window got a little bit melted, on the inside a few of the sensors got damaged, but nothing that can't be easily fixed or replaced. And despite my high degree of confidence in the fire suppression system, I also like to keep a fully charged fire extinguisher nearby at all times. The third and final major hazard is smoke and fumes. The byproduct of laser cutting and engraving is vaporized materials that can be harmful to your health in both the short term and the long term. This is one thing that most beginners tend to underestimate until they run their first job and they fill up their entire room with smoke. Don't let smoke and fume mitigation be an afterthought. The best thing we can do for ourselves here is eliminate the toxic fumes altogether. Never process materials like PVC and ABS as they can release very nasty toxic gases that can hurt you even in small amounts. If you don't know what the material is, then don't take your chances and process it. The next best thing you can do is substitute the material with something safe. For example, fake leather often contains PVC. Xtool offers a fake leather that I believe is polyurethane based instead, and this can be safely processed. Similarly, it's tempting to cut vinyl sticker sheets, but they're also typically PVC based. Instead, you can find products like sticker sheets or even the t-shirt iron-on material that is polyurethane based. Now there's other materials that are not immediately harmful, but they may still become an irritant or pose a risk with long-term exposure, your lungs were built to breathe clean air, so it's been my personal approach to contain and remove as much of the fumes as possible, no matter what the material. And again, the X-Tool enclosure will help you contain those fumes, and the ventilation port at the side gives you a means of removing them from your environment. Ideally, the exhaust is routed outside of your workspace. Plan your work area accordingly and work in a well-ventilated space. Use some ductwork to pull the smoke and fumes completely outdoors, I have a video where I show some of the solutions that I've come up with in the past. I'll link to that in the top right hand corner of the screen. I also offer a variety of adapters on my website to use common 4 inch dryer duct hose with enclosures like this one from Xtool. So that if you have to run the hose a long distance, the 4 inch dryer duct hose is cheap and common to find, plus it's compatible with the 4 inch inline duct fans to push or pull the fumes a longer distance. Now if you can't exhaust to the outdoors, or even if you can, but you have neighbors that don't want to smell the byproducts, Xtool also has two variants of their smoke and fume filtration systems. You can attach them directly to the enclosure, or if you're using their enclosed machines like the P2 or F1, 
you can suck the fumes directly from those machines. They offer a good level of filtration and the exhausted air is so much cleaner. You can still route the exhaust from the filter system outside for the very best results, but if that's not possible, it still leaps and bounds better than having no filtration system at all. And finally, if you're working with this type of equipment for long hours and you're doing this daily, you can also consider investing in a respirator as a means of PPE. Remember to take frequent breaks and remember to get some fresh air. So those are the three main types of hazards and some suggestions for mitigation, control, and protection. And the other thing that you should consider on top of all those hazards is the safety of others. Do your best to restrict access to your tools and equipment so that pets or children aren't accidentally exposed to those hazards. And the last thing to consider is that some people with respiratory conditions or even pregnant women can be very sensitive to smoke and fumes. So do your best to keep them away. And so this brings me to some exciting news from Xtool, which is the launch of their new product, the S1, which is a fully enclosed diode laser machine with safety as a top priority. It features a class one 40 watt diode laser with interchangeable laser heads, speeds up to 600 millimeters per second, a brand new and unique positioning system, as well as autofocus and accessories like conveyor feed. I'll be making a video about the S1 very shortly, so please subscribe so you don't miss that and check the links in the video description so you don't miss the Xtool S1 early bird giveaway. And if you guys want more Xtool content, please be sure to check out my channel. I already have a video covering the F1 as well as an entire playlist dedicated to the D1 Pro. And if you're looking to support this channel and my work, please check out the Xtool links in the video description down below as well as my website embracemaking.com where you'll probably find some kind of useful upgrade or accessory for your laser cutter or 3D printer. And so one big thank you to Xtool for sending me all of these amazing safety related products. I would not be able to make this video without them.